this video we will talk about the fetal skull its bones the areas of the skull sutures pontinels and the diameters the fetal skull is oval shaped at term it is larger in proportion to the fetal body and in comparison with the true pelvis the fetal skull is the most difficult part of the baby to pass through the mother's pelvic canal due to the hard bony nature of the skull however it is compressible to some extent first we will talk about the areas of skull the skull is arbitrarily divided into several zones of obstetrical importance these are the vertex it is a quadrangular area bounded anteriorly by the pregma and coronal sutures behind by the lambda and lambdoid sutures and laterally by the lines passing through the parietal eminences brow or sense put is an area bounded on one side by the anterior fontanel and coronal sutures and on the other side by the root of nose and supraorbital ridge of either side face is an area bounded on one side by the root of nose and supraorbital ridge and on the other side by the junction of the floor of the mouth with the neck the occipital region or the occiput is limited to the occipital bone this region between the face and the occiput is known as the base regarding the bones there are two frontal bones anteriorly forming sinusput or the brow at the center of each frontal bone is a frontal eminence these are the sites of ossification of the frontal bone during embryological development although may not be the first site frontal bones fuse to form only one frontal bone by 8 years of age there are two parietal bones superiorly the ossification centers of parietal bones are called parietal eminences one occipital bone lying at the back of the head and forms the region of the occiput part of the occipital bone contributes to the base of the skull as it contains the foramen magnum which protects the spinal cord as it leaves the skull laterally there are two temporal bones talking about the sutures flat bones of the vault are united together by non ossified membranes attached to the margins of bones these are called the sutures and the fontanels the sutures of obstetric importance are the frontal suture lies between two frontal bones the sagittal or the longitudinal suture which lies between two parietal bones the coronal sutures between parietal and frontal bones on either side the lambdoid sutures between occipital bone and two parietal bones and the sacromuscular suture between the temporal bone and the parietal bone the sutures permit gliding movement of one bone over the other during childbirth known as molding talking about the fontanels a wide gap in the suture line is called a fontanel there are almost 6 fontanels but only two have the obstetric importance first the anterior fontanel or pregma and the posterior fontanel or lambda the anterior fontanel is formed by the joining of four sutures the sutures are anteriorly frontal posteriorly sagittal and on either side coronal the shape of the anterior fontanel is like a diamond its anterior posterior and transverse diameters measure approximately 3 cm each the floor of the anterior fontanel is formed by a membrane and it becomes ossified 18 months after the birth it becomes pathological if it fails to ossify even after 24 months posterior fontanel is formed by junction of three suture lines sagittal suture anteriorly and lambdoid sutures on either sides it is triangular in shape and measures about 1.2 by 1.2 cm its floor is membranous but becomes bony at term lastly we will discuss about the diameters of fetal skull the engaging diameter of the fetal skull depends on the degree of flexion present the anterior posterior diameters of head which may engage are sub occipito pragmatic which extends from the nape of neck to the center of the pregma this measures 9.5 cm and it is the engaging diameter in case of complete flexion of the head and vertex presentation sub occipito frontal which extends from the nape of the neck to the anterior end of the anterior fontanel or center of the sinusoid it measures 10 cm and it is the engaging diameter in case of incomplete flexion and vertex presentation occipito frontal extends from the occipital eminence to the root of the nose measuring 11.5 cm it is the engaging diameter in case of marked deflection of the head and vertex presentation mento vertical extends from the midpoint of the chin to the highest point on the sagittal suture it is 14 cm long and it is the engaging diameter in case of partial extension of the head
and brow presentation. Submento vertical. This diameter extends from junction of the floor of the mouth and neck to the highest point on the sagittal suture. It measures 11.5 cm and it is the engaging diameter when there is incomplete extension of the fetal head and there is face presentation. Submento pragmatic. This extends from the junction of floor of the mouth and neck to the center of the pragma, measures 9.5 cm and it is the engaging diameter in case of complete extension of the fetal head and face presentation. The transverse diameters which are concerned in the mechanism of labor include biparietal diameter measures 9.5 cm. It extends between two parietal eminences. Whatever may be the position of the head, this diameter nearly always engages. Bitemporal diameter, this measures 8 cm. It is the distance between the anterior inferior ends of the coronal suture or the farthest points on the coronal suture. So this completes the fetal skull. In this we discussed about the fetal skull, its regions, bones, sutures, fontanelles and the diameters.